US Vice President Al Gore has recently said that India is going to be the largest market anywhere in the world this century. Now, India has six lakh villages, and 850 million people live in those villages. That makes it 70% of our population. And according to a recent research published by Accenture Research, they say that each one of those 850 million people wants the branded and wants the best. Gaon mein aajkal, har aadmi aur aurat ko sabse best cheez chahiye. Chahe wo kapde ho, jute ho, television sets ho, mobile phones ho, music systems ho, gaariya ho, they want the best. Aur wo har cheez sooch samaj ke, sooch bhooj ke kharidna chahta hai. And that's where your role comes in rural marketeers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now heading into a panel discussion that's going to put under spotlight the need for SAP, Standard Acceptance Procedure. And to initiate this discussion, I'm now going to invite on stage Mr. Rahul Singhal. He is a Group CEO, Geometry Globus, Encompass Network, and Task Force Leader, SAP. Rahul, good evening. Okay, so I'll just spend a couple of minutes, I won't take too much of your time, I'll just spend a couple of minutes talking about this SAP document and what this is about. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank Sanjay. Uh, I think this is a phenomenal initiative of, uh, uh, see, in many ways, I think we are still a, a slightly unorganized uh, uh, industry. I know, I know that over the past few years, uh, there have been a lot of initiatives to bring us all together on various platforms, uh, but, but uh, we, are, we are still finding finding reasons and, and platforms that connect us closer to this larger, larger industry forum called RMAI. Now, one of the initiatives that Sanjay thought about is that, is that there, is, there is this need right now for us to uh, follow and comply. What KPMG has actually done is that they have taken, they have taken a look at the types of contracts um, uh, uh, and, and, um, that we sign with clients, the types of contracts that we sign, that we sign with the people who work with us, um, and, and they have also looked, they have also looked at what, what the law of the land stipulates. And based on all of that, they have then come up with what they call is a set of guidelines that can actually help us understand that if this is the industry that we're in, then what are the minimum wages by state we ought to be paying? What are the types of clauses that we can be signing, uh, and so on and so forth? Um, uh, Sanjay mentioned this, but I will mention this again. The entire attempt over here is to create a system where we, where we, where we basically create a voluntary um, uh, accreditation process. Okay, this is obviously not compulsory. RMI, RMI as a governing body uh, can only lay down the guidelines that they hope will bring us all together as one industry. Uh, but it is purely voluntary, and, and, and at a later point, once, once you come on board and, and actually become and, and apply for the accreditation, and we will go through the entire process that we can follow for accreditation, you can then go up and, and probably put up that seal on all of your communication to say that we, we adhere to some of the, we adhere to the poly, we adhere to the processes that have been laid out by this document. Okay, so what I'd like to do is is. Um, I'd like to pose a couple of questions uh, uh, to, the, to the panel that we have over here. Um, Vivek uh, Panda, uh, so Vivek, Vivek Panda works with KPMG and, and he's been our key uh, point of contact on um, uh, this entire project. And uh, the question that I'd like to ask you, or it's not really a question, but uh, I'd like you to elaborate on the entire methodology that you have used to actually arrive at the seven uh, critical imperatives. Uh, so, the, you know, the methodology that we, you know, we initially started with good round of discussions with Sanjay Rahul, you know, to understand key insights about RMAI, what are the key activities, which goes into the cause for rural marketing, and what is, what is, what exactly is the objective for coming out with this kind of an initiative. Uh, KPMG here, you know, in India, we are working with a good number of multinational companies where as a responsible business entities, you know, these multinational companies has their own standard or code of conduct, there are different names to it, around social and environmental aspects. And uh, they expect any business partners who are associated with them to comply with the same. Uh, one of the key things, you know, that for, for this kind of an industry, you know, we had a good number of stakeholder interactions. Stakeholder interactions with, uh, you know, a few of the automobile, Automobile giants here, you know, uh, uh, most of them are uh, members of RMAI here. 
we also had a discussion with fm you know some of them FM, fmcg people here and uh, we try to understand you know what is their perception you know what are the key challenges that they feel uh, in terms of uh, you know the workforce that they are associated with and based on these several interactions that we had you know we understood that you know these are the seven key elements which is coming out to be a common uh, areas you know which was pointed out by most of the stakeholders and rahul has already said uh, these are seven key elements which has come out and uh, what we have tried to do here is that you know the objective was uh, uh, you know to uh, to have you know these seven key elements which is a must have uh, uh, thing uh, which are very basic basic things which we would say and uh, which not only as a responsible business entity we should comply with which is also a, a legal obligation you know as a part of our land of law uh, these seven you know the document that we have come across standard assessment procedure elaborates on all these seven key elements what are the key assessment parameters which you know which as a as a responsible business entity we can comply with and what are the legal obligations around it and what can be the key potential risks so we have highlighted it we have also highlighted you know how our industry can implement it implement it at, at, at their site and, and you know in the value chain thank you um, my next question is to Dalveer Singh. Dalveer Singh is the Asia Pacific Head for Experiential Marketing at Group M's Dialogue Factory. Um, Dalveer, now, um, this entire process is voluntary. This accreditation process is voluntary. Uh, but while we say it's voluntary, we understand that this is fundamentally very good for our industry and we obviously want to invite maximum participation. I just wanted to um, understand your views on how we can make this accreditation process, this voluntary process, um, uh, very simple to understand, very simple to implement, and invite maximum participation. I think it's very simple. There's a saying in Hindi, kar bhala to ho bhala, ant bhale ka bhala. And if you translate the same into English, doing good is good for business. All of us who are sitting here, I think it's, it's, it's a shame on us here as an industry. Look at a guy, most of your rural work happens with a man and a van. That's the story of rural and all of us have done it at some time or the other. Imagine a guy who's been on a van in that heat, in that dust, in that cold. He doesn't know where will he sleep in the night. He doesn't know where will he have his meals. Okay. Now, these are basics. These seven things are like Saath Fera. To me and for the industry, we should make it a Saath Fera between any relationship that we have with either a client or a client with the partners. Don't call them suppliers. They are the guys who are making you make those brands come alive in those rural markets, especially for the marketers where you can't reach through other medium. Look at the, look at, look at the amount of, it's, everything is physical there. They are like soldiers for, the, for, for, for doing rural marketing in, in, in these tough markets. So if, if I have my way, nothing voluntary, it should be done for everyone. And every, every campaign that we do, everything that we do in rural marketing should have those seven feras around that. Um, I now, uh, and, 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 and you spoke about how um, uh, clients must be extremely supportive of this initiative, and I'm going to move to three clients now. Okay, and I'm going to ask all three of you the same question. Uh, we've got uh, Sanjay Panigrahi, who is the president, Rurban and Special Projects at Pidilite. Uh, we've got Puneet Vidyarthi, who's the head rural business and digital innovations at JCB. And we've got Puneet Chadda, who's general manager and divisional head, rural and commercial Maruti Suzuki. Sirs, I'm going to ask all three of you the same question, and you can, uh, you can choose to answer them um, in, I mean, just, just start with any one of you. As a client, what are your views on the need for such a standard assessment procedure document? It's a fairly simple question and I just wanted to hear your view. See, as a manufacturer, as a brand, uh, we all talk about that world is our marketplace. Now, if I have to deliver, if a brand has to deliver something at a marketplace, which is where the com competition is with the world brands, uh, the brand is not built by anyone else other than people. So, a good people will only deliver good results. So all, we are, all what we are trying to do is the standards, procedures, which will deliver good results, and that can happen only with good people. So definitely we, are, we support this thought and uh, look forward to uh, further refine this document and have a uh, larger discussion and uh, obviously move on, move, move ahead in this direction. Well, uh, at the outset, I would definitely like to 
support and complement the initiative. Any new initiative which you take, whether it is pertaining to sustainability, you know, most of the people talk about sustainability, how many follow? People talk about CSR, how many follow? But then those people who really believe in it, they follow, practice, and make others follow. So I personally feel, you know, because I, I work in the agri and the livestock space, and these people who actually work, as Delbirji said, you know, van and man, we work very closely with them. We know they suffer. And why they suffer, you know, I mean, somehow it, it, it actually boils down to the cost. And if we are able to convince the organizations like me, Puneet, that you, you know, maybe you have to spend a little extra, but then this is what is going to result into. This is going to result into wel welfare, better results, better sustainability, better brands. So I, I think uh, we are all out. I support, compliment, and whatever support is required from our side, we definitely would work hand in glove with the agencies and surely make it a big success. Thank you. Fantastic. I just like to, I just like to add. This is a beginning of a very long uh, drawn uh, strategy for welfare of uh, our rural people. To be very frank with you, when uh, I was first approached uh, on this, uh, it was very challenging for, it made me think that suppose uh, somebody is going and doing uh, wall painting for our brand in rural market, do I really care whether he's paid uh, uh, on time or not, whether he works uh, as per uh, the required hours or not, or what it is? I really did not care before this question was asked to me. So it made me think whether we, yes, as manufacturer, we give contract to our vendors, and uh, they take care of all these uh, small parts of, of wall painting and so many uh, campaigns that we do. And we never think on, on these lines. So yes, it makes us think, and uh, it will definitely go a long way in uh, improving things. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to, I'd just like to add uh, one point over there. So while we are pushing for all of this, uh, from and, and we understand that we have a moral obligation and therefore from a humanitarian perspective, we must all wholeheartedly support this.